What's up YouTube, this is Slan here and this is a quick little video just demonstrating how I'm doing sleepers and adding the sleeper volumes. Uh, we've got Hal's Empty World and an empty prefab to test on. The other thing I'm using is Pills Editor. Uh, so that's this prefab just loaded up there ready so I can try and keep this as short as possible. So the only thing you just need to imagine is all of the loot because I place home my sleeper blocks manually. I'm not a big fan of the automated side of that and I get far better results just doing it myself. You can hide the sleepers better and reducing teleporting zombies is like quite a big deal. So just as an example I'll, I'll pro with a low picket fence like this I probably wouldn't be putting them in the garden unless I've got things to hide them behind. Uh, but for now we'll just dot some around and we'll, we'll take it from there. So what's this, the loft. Right, so we'll want a feral sleeper bomb to attack someone as soon as they come through that door. I want standing zombies. Uh, the ferals I don't think have a chance to be decoys or what the other things were. But you need four. I know that because I've got lots of feral groups down in certain uh, little prefabs like you might have seen. Um, I'll just stick some sleepers down there. Now you can use pills tool to count the sleepers that you've got down which was an amazingly useful thing to have. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to ask for that. It just appeared one day in an update and it enabled me just to go through and check all my things and I fixed a load of errors just doing that alone. Uh, I think you will get the triggered empty sleeper volume if you try to spawn a group that you don't have enough blocks for. So large groups tend to be 7 plus, uh, 5 or 6 will do most of the smaller groups. Um, we'll not do every room but we'll try a few different excuse me <coughs> we'll try a few different sort of styles because like I said before I'm going to try a sleeper bomb as soon as they open the front door uh, we'll do some ferals from this room maybe as well I'm just a glutton for punishment. You don't have to go this hard, but this is just kind of little things that I'm going to try and do and how I would do them, and then we'll see if it works. Now, one thing that's important to note, if you're going to use Hal's World uh, in this method of placing the sleeper blocks, once you've saved the prefab, if you load the prefab back up, it won't spawn the sleepers and if you save it again it will save it without them so this for me is the absolute last stage and I find when I when you, you'll see in a minute or two when I go into the editor once I've placed them manually by hand I kinda know what I'm setting each room up to be or I've got a little note in my head where I just you know I can picture the, like the situation and I think that, that massively helps as well as having a plan of how people are going to approach and get about some prefabs you just want to have the odd zombie lying around, other prefabs you might want to surprise someone. Uh, Girtle Heights is really going to destroy people I think. 10 minutes in that place and if you get past the uh, ferals at the door, assuming you go in through that door. <laughs> right, uh, that's one, two, three, four. We should have enough to work with yeah. So first thing I'm going to do is we'll pretend that this is finished and prefab save. Boom. So that's sorted. Now I'll just get the editor up. Now I need to quickly load that prefab back up. But this is the beauty of having Hal's Empty World is I can just make instant changes like that and then just load it up straight away. So there we are again, and here's what sleep as. So from here on out, like I say, I like to have my little plan. So we'll focus firstly on that initial feral bomb that I've, I had talked about. That's going to charge down the stairs and kill people as soon as they open the door. Is this doing it? Yeah, yeah that's okay. Right, so the ferals are going to be 
this is the stairs all oh, right there we go these guys here so because of the way the volumes work you've got to play where well, you don't have to you can change it afterwards but start at the bottom layer and then go one layer below so i want the volume the person is going to be stood at the front door is that the door there yeah, so the, the guy's going to be stood on this block when he triggers these ferals up there. So by the time he smashed the door in or opened it and walked through, they're already going to be spawned. They're going to be ready to chin him because he should be with an aggro range of ferals. So we'll see how it works. So the volume, the guy's going to be here when he triggers it. So we'll start the volume here. And then the rest of it, I mean, is is quite easy, really. So I want to go one wider and pill if you watch this. Seriously, placing these things down gets so annoying. So actually, I could be zoomed in a bit more. Right, and so the stairwell, uh, I don't want this volume to interfere with these blocks. So I'm going to just make it to the wall. So in the thing here, we'll just make it four wide. It needs to be... It's about 12. And we'll give it seven layers, I think would be enough. No, not quite. Right, so here I've created a problem for myself, I think. This block is going to be triggered by this volume, which we don't want, because you might not want to feral in this room. That's not part of the plan, so we'll just fix that quickly now. Uh, and we'll make that a little bit wider. So, all my sleepers are, are covered. I can check by clicking the count button. I don't know why the editor is running so slow at the minute, but there you go. There's me four blocks. Now, I know for a fact that the feral zombie small group needs to... It'll spawn two to four zombies, so I'll check, choose that one. And because I'm nice, we'll make it hard. Now, I don't want... I'm not 100% sure on this is loot volume, but what I tend to find is if I want a group of zombies to be alive and actively attacking people, I think this basically just says don't have a chance to be lootable or a decoy or any of that shit so the idea is is we should get all well either two probably four feral zombies come charging just from this group that we've done here as soon as we open the door uh, so I'm gonna leave that empty <coughs> uh, the other ground floor group so this one this one's gonna be a little bit weird because it's gonna overlap so one thing we need to be aware of is it cannot be high, well it's not going to matter for this but you'd have to take into account any sleeper blocks in the layers above it because for example this one here could have been overlapping and the first group that you trigger will eat the blocks up and could potentially eat up enough blocks out of another volume that's just going to leave that one with not enough blocks and trigger a, a empty volume error. So Again, we want the volume. This is the this is the layer where people are going to trigger it. There's doors here and here, so I want the volume to uh, be triggerable on probably from about there because I've got none in this room, and there's no reason why they can't trigger these zombies at the front door as well. So we'll go down one layer, make a new volume, and we'll stick that one here. So that's one block in front of the door, but these aren't, or shouldn't be, feral unless you have a hard game stage modifier and you're a bit of a higher level. But for now, that should be okay for us. Now I think I might be having an issue where my volumes, when they're, when they're as tight as that, don't work. So I just let, when I've got space to do it, there's nothing wrong with giving them an extra layer in my eyes. And it just means that the sleepers from this first group are definitely, definitely in this. Right, and so this second group here, uh, I'll guess it 12, 13 by 9.
and this is going to be a problem if I had sleepers in the shed in this little room here or in these rooms here but I don't so I'm not worried about that this is just going to show you as them work and I hope now there's only five zombies here we'll just a double check yeah and just because I know that should be okay for that one we'll just leave this now now I want these ones are going to be hiding behind chairs they're going to be hiding behind rubbish and other crap that you may place in the building and is part of a little bit of exploration I kind of don't mind this particular room having lootable zombies or decoys and that sort of thing so for this one we'll just say that that's okay so that takes care of the downstairs zombies on that side right and so upstairs on this building you've dealt with the ferals somehow we want you to trigger these four here so we'll go one layer below make a new volume drag it over here now just to make sure now we're going to be particularly evil we want these zombies to be ferals as well but I want these zombies to trigger when you're about halfway up the stairs so again they're spawned in, they're alive and hopefully de detecting you before you've had a chance to really uh, know that they're there so I'll move that over, it doesn't go down low enough so uh, it's the volume starts on layer 10 change that to 6 Ah, oh, but it's still only three though, isn't it? That's why that's confusing us. Needs to be one more. Again, because this volume here is going to overlap these. So, I'm just going to give it that extra layer above as well. Now, I'm not too worried about these zombies because you'll trigger this group and they will use up those blocks long before you walk into this one. There's no chance, really, if you're coming into, into this one and interfering with this group. And even if you came in through the back window, you would trigger this group, or you will trigger this group. But in that situation, the purple group might use these blocks I suppose so you're not allowed to climb into the back window here because it will break my game and that one will go 10 13 so that's the stairs this is A so you will be standing here when you trigger the group and you come up that step and that step into the passage now hopefully these guys are alive by this point and ready to chin you. And we make these final smalls. Again, we want these to kill the player, so we don't want them uh, to be loot. So we'll just make these ones. Let's add a thousand. I've never had a thousand before. We'll see how crazy that goes. This here is just a little bug if I resize. It's because the volume stretched off and it'll crack the terrors when you scroll through layers but those bits hanging off the side, side stay there until you zoom in or out so we've got three volumes there there's just one on this one here so make another volume and we'll do this one quickly now I've got this prefab already wrote in Navas Gains XML and I've got the coordinates ready so once I've done this I'll save the uh, prefab itself and we'll quickly jump into Nav and hopefully see them working uh, what am I doing? And again, I want these ones to trigger. They're going to come up because I know that this is a passageway. And this is a little corridor. There's nothing wrong with them triggering these zombies when they get to the top of the stairs. And then you've got a little bit of time. And there's only going to be four, or potentially four, so... But this is little things that I've had to be a bit, had to be a bit careful about because... In Slanhattan, I've got a crazy amount of volumes that are just overlapping. Uh, and 
it's a bit of a waste if the person's not going to deal with the zombies or you're not going to make the zombies a threat to that person then there's no point in having that uh, group spawn because that's four zombies towards the server limit and when you've got nine or ten people running around there's places in Slanhattan you can run in a in a nice little route and spawn easily over a hundred zombies if you know where to go so that volume's looking okay I'll make it a bit longer and this is just to make sure there's a bit of room if, if for some strange reason you came in through another way ah and the loft Right, we'll go for the third feral trap on the left and it's just a crappy one on the right. Oh, let's just chuck that there. Ah. Where's the ladders? There they are. So this one really should start probably at this at the, the ground level here. Uh, which is 10. needs to go about eight up. Is that right? Is that gonna get them all? Right, so basically, as soon as they climb on the ladder, they're going to trigger these zombies here. And there's what, six there. Little room extra small, yep, yep. Oh, we've got eight. Ah, because it's reading the ones down below. So again, that's a bit, missed, uh, a bit misleading, because if them zombies have already been triggered as you've moved up through the house, when you get to this one, if you've got a group set for eight, and you've already used four or five up, that's not going to work. Uh, we'll, we'll just go for something easy. There are no there. Uh, again, I don't mind these ones having a chance of being decoys, so we'll see what happens. And we'll do the same thing. Yeah, we'll do. But I'm going to have to make those a bit tighter. So what I want to do is copy you and put you there. And copy you and get rid of that one. So this volume is going to start right on the ladder like the other one. And it needs to go in up. And then by six. Right, so, just to recap before we dive in the game, the house on the left is going to kill her at the front door. Then, we are going to be able to go into the front room and see these zombies here. Once we get halfway up the stairs, hopefully, the dudes in this room are going to come running down and kill her again. And then when we get onto the ladders, these guys, which I haven't set, <laughs> are going to come and kill her as well. And again, we'd, we want these to go and bray the player in, so we don't want any chance of them being loot or any other fun spoiling things. So they're saved, they're all looking default small. The green one hasn't been changed, that should be. So the house on the right is just more simple spawns. We've got the loft the attic, uh, the front upper bedroom and that's it in that one. So I'm going to save you, get rid of this horrible screen, go back into the game. And hopefully this should work just nicely. Oh, I've just wasted 20 minutes.
And we can hear the birds already. No 144 hub cells to fucking generate. DM and we are going to fifteen. There we go. What the hell is this? <laughs> Oh, I thought it was in Slanhattan for a second. I was just thinking to myself, I'm sure I cleaned that all out for this. Right. Uh, okay then. So, <laughs> the house on the left. The zombies are there. They didn't come and get us though. So... Obviously there was five blocks in this room, but the extra small group has just rolled those particular two. <laughs> I don't know why they're not attacking us. I've uh, had this happen before. When you look in the last videos that I've done, uh, the zombies are rather deadly now to get us. But that's these ones here. Oh, we'll not clip through the walls because we need to trigger them properly. So, we are triggering the zombies on the left. We are triggering zombies in the attic. There we go. And there we go. And you notice that these are the groups that we set is true. Actually, let's just quickly check these and oh, he's alive. And so it's hey. Oh, there you go, that's that theory out the window. But look at the eyes though. He's definitely a runner. He's not gonna make you uh, <laughs> your day a happy one. So, unfortunately the zombies didn't come and kill us. I don't know why. Yeah, uh, I might have done something. I've been messing around with loads of stuff anyway, so that is potentially something I've just uh, broken myself. But you can see all of the volumes actually worked on that one. We didn't get any any empty volumes at all, so I'd call that a success. Um, good luck messing around.